Hello. Chaplain Greg Holden here on a sunny Sunday. We're traveling. We are in Ohio. Bluffton, Ohio. Cute little town. I'll show you some photos. Oh, a very big bird. Oh my God, an eagle. An eagle just, an eagle just flew out of this tree across the street. That tree. Now where did they go? Let's go see. <laughs> it's just a pine tree. So there's a cute little house. There's a Girl Scout house, a house, and a tree. And an eagle flew out of that tree. Bald eagle with a white tail. And I don't see it anywhere. Where were we <laughs> before we were interrupted? I'm in Bluffton, Ohio. Yes, I'm walking in the direction the eagle flew. In case I find it, I will show it to you in case you can't believe me. <laughs> so I was a uh, chaplain. I'm retired now. I worked in hospitals and hospice, specialized in end of life. And I have been beginning to relate some notable events I came across at end of life for the patients I work with. Sometimes I came across things that I called miracles. As I said earlier, you know, I'm looking for that bird. When you watch one of my videos, I'm sorry, you're going to get be distracted by birds. What I uh, called miracles, as I said in the previous video, as which I will link to above. The word miracle comes from the, oh, possibly I see our friend. So see the pine tree up ahead? Up at about two o'clock. Oh, just outside in the back, behind the pine tree, there's a big bird. As I was saying that in the previous video, the term miracle comes from the Latin word miraculum, which means object of wonder. And I saw many objects of wonder in the hospital, patients who had dignity, patients who were extremely brave, who were patient with everyone and everything, who were inspiring, who showed love which is, that's what it's all about at end of life, love. But I did see one event that I would call an actual miracle, something that defied the laws of nature and of science, at least what we were taught in school. And I will relate that to you. I was called to the ICU to meet with a young woman. When I say young, I want to not give personal details, but she could have been my daughter. She was that young and she was very seriously ill. She was ex intubated, which means she was breathing only with the assistance of a machine through a breathing tube that had been placed in her throat, trying to get the lighting better. I hope that's better. So I was called to the ICU to speak to this young woman who was intubated but who could speak um, with writing and who had her mother with her. And her mother explained that she was a praise dancer. I didn't know, I had not heard that term before, but a praise dancer is one of a group of young people who participates in the very earnest and energetic religious services in the African American community by dancing. As, as the music is playing and everyone's singing and swaying and gesticulating, they will be dancing to the music and praising God, praising Jesus. That's what she did. She was a very religious person. Often I was called to the ICU to uh, say a prayer and to meet with the families at the time of extubation, which is the removal of the breathing tube from such patients, after which 
Uh, they might uh, die right then in the uh, hospital room, or if they were able to breathe on their own, they might later be transferred to hospice or nursing home or even home. This particular one, young woman was very ill. I don't actually know what she was ill with, I don't remember, but she was, as I recall, she was given not a long time to live. So the pastor came to do this. I didn't have to go and say a prayer with the family because their own pastor came. He came with an entourage. He was very focused. He did not talk much to doctors or nurses. He went right to that young patient and held her hand and he did not let go. And he looked deeply in her eyes and he prayed. And he did this the whole time. That was his focus. I believe in that touch, something was communicated to her. So he asked if he could keep holding her hand and being in the room while the extubation was actually done, which they don't usually encourage people to do, but they did allow the pastor to do this. So while he was praying, they turned the lights down in the room, which is something I encourage you to do if you're ever in a similar situation with your family or someone you know or are working with. Turn the lights down. Put on some music that they love. Make this a sacred moment. Make this a prayerful moment. Someone put on gospel music, and the doctor and I, so I remember we were standing in the back of the room and I, I kind of got chills because the music was beautiful and you couldn't help swaying a little bit back and forth with the music. And after the extubation, this continued, prayer continued. She breathed on her own. She seemed to be doing okay. And I left to see other patients. I heard later that she improved. She got out of the ICU and she I was told, walked out of the hospital. So usually people have to leave in a wheelchair, so I don't know if that's literally true, but she might have walked out of the wheelchair and presumably went home. That was a miracle. I believe something was communicated in that touch, in that prayer, and in her strong faith and having her pastor there, a representative of God. I believe that all helped. I believe that it's better to believe something than nothing, to have some sort of faith. Even if it's something like this, you know, you're out in nature, you're by the rushing stream, you saw an eagle go by, you, you thank the creator for all of this, or you do Reiki, or you do yoga, or you do whatever. But something I do believe something is better than nothing. I walked away from my own faith in my teenage years, my Catholic faith. And for a long time, I was very negative on all the main line Christian, Jewish, Muslim, monotheistic religions. When I worked in the hospital, however, I saw how that connection helped people, how it comforted families, how it gave them strength. And in so doing, they gained a power, they gained a sovereignty. And that means a lot. I think that means everything, frankly. And even if you are at your last moments, to have that is everything. Even as a Buddhist, we were taught that if you die with love, if you die with peace, if you die in with a, a, a sense of wisdom, maybe even as close to enlightenment as you can get, uh, that will help you in the next life. And uh, you will gain control over your future lives because Buddhism believes in reincarnation. Anyway, that's one miracle that I saw. I do encourage you to, not necessarily if you don't want to go back to church, fine, but find something to give you comfort and strength and community. Okay, this is Chaplain Greg. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking with my distraction. <laughs> you have to believe me that that was an eagle. I don't see it around here, but if I do, I'll, I'll let you know. Please subscribe. It, it, this doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me a great deal. And please push the like button. And I wish you peace.